with international trade centers urging governments to think strategically at a very granular detail about how standards and regulation can either help or hinder SMEs, especially in exporting, and in order to seize opportunities to boost national trade. In a report revealing the competitiveness of small and medium-sized enterprises, the ITC notes that regulations are the key to boosting trade. Arancha Gonzalez is the executive director of the International Trade Center. We spoke earlier today. Well, for two reasons. First, because these standards are more and more produced in the South. In the past, 100% of the standards were produced in the North. Today, 40% of the standards that are created are created in the South. And this is normal because these standards are to a large extent also driven by consumers. And consumers want quality. Consumers want protection. Consumers want sustainability in the North and the South, in the East and in the West. So this uh, trend is here to stay. The only question is, do we use this to include or to exclude those that don't meet the standards today? How can we help the smallest, those that are at the end of the chain, be part of these international standards? Indeed. Uh, let's move on to the World Trade Organization's Trade Facilitation Agreement. How can it help close that compliance gap, especially when it comes to standards uh, in developing economies? If we start from what consumers are telling us is that they want more environmental sustainability. You see, these standards are today produced both by governments, public standards, and privately by NGOs or by companies. Walmart, Carrefour, they make their own standards and the suppliers that want to be part of those value chains have to comply with these private standards. So what we have been doing in the International Trade Center is analyze all these standards, put them together, compare them. In order to facilitate this process of convergence, very often we find that, for example, out of 10 standards applying to coffee, they are 95% the same. So we are now telling those that produce the standards, again, whether they are public or private, we are telling them maybe you, it's just a question of all of you and your stakeholders sitting around the table and finding a way to simplify this soup of standards uh, that affect the same product or the same service, knowing that the only way is up. There is no way we can reduce the standards. The only way is try to make them converge at the up level, at the top level, because this is what will create also a virtuous circle of better competitiveness for SMEs. At a time when we're seeing a lot more protectionist sentiment rising in Western Europe, in North America, in quite a few places around Africa as well, um, isn't there a risk that the message you're pushing here, more openness, more standardization, a lot more cross-border trade, might get swamped amidst that, all that noise of let's turn inwards, let's trade within ourselves, let's be more self-dependent? Well, the, the let's turn inward, the let's protect ourselves, the let's eat uh, only what we produce, the let's only employ our nationals, it's unfortunately today very trendy, but when we look at the economic realities, it just simply doesn't work. It doesn't work, and it doesn't work for standards, for example. What we know is that larger markets help SMEs meet more standards. Fragmented markets help SMEs less in... Uh, it's more costly for them uh, to accept the standards. So reality is telling us that national responses don't work because our economies are just simply too interlinked together. So to me, the question is not so much erecting walls or excluding uh, the foreigners, but rather finding a way to ensure trade in the 21st century is more inclusive. It trickles down to the smallest. It trickles down to those that today are excluded from international trade. This requires active, proactive, inclusive policies uh, by governments and not excluding policies by governments.